we have here, oh, a blue track, one by, what is this? Oh, it's FX Hybrid, beautiful. Ooh, it's in for a tune-up though. Let's see if we can get the drive chain to be clean and inspected. Make sure the frame is all cracked up as it's supposed to be. And view this bike after this. Truck hybrid. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary out of used, one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to the Noah Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy on this old bike series. Well, not so old. We are looking at a newer version, but we're going to do tune-ups on this, which is a Trek FX3, which is a hybrid. Hybrid is not a road bike, not a mountain bike. It's the in-between compromise. These came out in the 90s and they're still very relevant, relevant today due to the fact that they're great for bike paths, dirt roads, camping, a lot of recreational riding. It is like your true gravel bike before gravel bikes became a gravel bike, which gravel bikes are high, cycle cross bikes. But anyway, we're not going to go there. But this one's kind of cool because it has a huge range, kind of like their mountain bike style one by with a mountain bike rear derailleur, which is Dior. And you got the one by out front. And on top of that is hydraulic disc brake versus mechanical gets you better performance and so forth with hydraulics. Also, aluminum frame, carbon fork. So yeah, nice little bikes. You know, they're pretty solid. They're great for recreational use and so forth. But this is fairly new. They just need to do a tune-up, a general tune-up, which is the you know, entry level. Which mainly I'm going to be doing a lot of cleaning. Um, in addition to double checking the hubs, the disc brakes, clean the pads. Uh, also clean the chain, the cassette, and the rear derailleur. Just get it to like more fresh. And actually, a bike like this, even though it was bought new and is a few years old, I would say about four, it was actually pretty decent in a bike in the range of hybrids first. And second, buying it new usually is produced and also built by bike builders. Nothing against bike builders, but they're just a volume creature. They just build bikes and they usually get paid on commission as well. Or they get a bump for each unit they go. So it, it behooves them to crank out as many as fast as possible. Therefore, a lot of things that we used to do back in the 90s as building bikes totally get overlooked. Um, adjusting the hubs, chewing the wheels, uh, you know, double checking, you know, they do the basics and actually that, you know, take away from what's from the 90s to now the 2020s, um, those between 30 years, 20 or 30 years, they've actually produced a lot better bike coming out of the box, obviously, because you got Canyon and several other brands that ship right to your door and you put a couple things together and it's good to go. Well, yeah, that may be the case here, but there's still things that are really kind of just not really looked at too closely when they're being built new. And in addition to, I'm gonna give this guy a little, little ceramic coating, give a little extra pop to the color, as well as protection. So a double win there. So let's just dive into this bad boy and see what we got. Part of the interruption, there is more. More you say, push the more button. Push it, push it, I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching, in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop, as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts, as well as my website, to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube. And now back to your original programming. So here we have the front wheel. This has an interesting skewer. It's a through axle skewer combination. So these are ah, really interesting. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You have to unscrew out the skewer all the way and it has a dropout on one side and a through axle portion on the other and only one spring. So we got to keep track of this guy, which is very kind of interesting in itself because just you got all this got going on, but hey, it works. Um, he obviously he put on his own computer because he didn't use zip ties, he used twist ties, which doesn't really hold in place. And he went over the actual cable itself. So I'll probably clean this up with for him and put some zip ties on there and get underneath a hydraulic line 
which you know is just a little bit cleaner and aesthetics, that kind of thing. This also has a nice little scuffage here, and I'm going to see if I can clean that up for this guy. On to the back. So this one has a quick lease as well. And how the builder uh, put that in there, really not convenient. So we will replace, the, put these in a different position so it's easier for the customer to utilize it. I put the chain down to the smallest cog so it makes it easier for the derailleur to drop out. This is a clutch, so you need to pull the clutch so the derailleur will actually move. So you can drop that rear wheel out like so. Yeah, big ol'. We used to call those pie cogs. All right, let's take a look and see if this has a power link so I can just do a uh, quick clean on this guy. It should, but I just need to find it. Where are you, power link? Ah. Maybe not. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> knew you were in there somewhere. So I take these apart and you want to keep track of these little guys and put them separately if you're going to put them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Like so. All right. Oh, looking at this guy. <sighs> Looks pretty dirty. I think I'm going to take this off and give it a good cleaning. Oh, that cable just wants to Get sucked right in there. Woo! Look at that. So this crimper, I'm just going the opposite direction. Try to get that aluminum to pull off without fraying the cable so I can thread it back through easily. And screw this and pull that cable through. And give this a nice little ultrasonic clean rinse and then I'll be taking the brake pads off as well. So going to be just trying to get all that gunk and dust and gunk out of there and re-lube it fresh so it has better you see how it kind of kind of stiff to it. Well once it's cleaned out this is kind of girthy. Wow. Nice. <laughs> So these particular brakes, it's not a thread, they just bend over this pin. So you just diligently try to flatten that pin back out, that straight so you can pull it out like so. And this should slide right out. And there's your brake pads I'm gonna clean and reinstall after I clean all this area here. And I'm going to do the same to the front. Bend that up so it can go smoothly through. Like so. And slide the brake pads down. Give them a good cleaning. Ah, all right, so we got the parts stripped off that I'm going to be cleaning. And I'm just exposed to the frame so I can get to the nitty gritty and get some of this grime out of the way and give it a good cleaning. And after the cleaning, I'm going to give it a nice little extra boost of ceramic protection. <sighs> so, so this one's had a little bit of use where you kind of see a couple scratches here and there. Hopefully the cleaning and the polishing here We'll make that go away to make it look a little more or less used and just taking off all this extra grime is going to really help. And they look like they've hit some good backsplash puddles in their area where they went biking. So the last couple of rides were kind of messy in the off season here. So. We're gonna see if we can give that a good cleaning there. Got some built up gook in the crank here from assembly. And, uh, and this is just the basic tune. So this one, not like the other one, I took the crank off to 
clean the chain ring, but I didn't really need to. Oh, that's interesting. So it has a weird little. Critter, something dead in there or something. <laughs> something or like ran over something crusty. That was, that was kind of weird. So, yeah, so it's going to be just a lot of, a little bit of flossing. So for yourself at home, if you wanted to clean this and not have the tools or the time or whatever, you can still floss it around the bottom bracket area and get to it when you need to. Give it a good little go over. So, I mean, it's a pretty blue. I like this blue, it's awesome. And I was talking about that. Oh, it's got, it looks like kind of like paint of some sort. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little more of a concentrated cleaner and see if I can get that to remove. But yeah, it's gone. Back to, oh. so probably fell over in the garage and hit something with the paint on there. And there lies the problem on that guy. Wipe off his calipers. And I can wipe them off now because uh, I don't have any chemicals or anything that's going to contaminate the pads because guess what? The pads are on the bench ready to be cleaned themselves. And how I clean those is use rubbing alcohol and then you burn them. You uh, light them on fire. Kind of a small torch to clean off those pads and then they're good to go. All right, I think I got the good layer of dirt off of this and a couple of scuffs are basically rubbed right off. All right, so gonna clean the parts clean the frame up, true the wheels, adjust the hubs, and uh, we'll review, um, check out these clean parts. Check out the frame after I do my magic. Here we have a clean chain of set rear derailleur. Oh yeah, that came out super nice, super clean. Oh, where's the brake pads? Oh, they're over here, drying from being burned. And we got the wheels. True, rotors clean, hubs adjusted, ready to go, and wow, this looks a lot better. All cleaned without the gunk and dirt. Wait a second, didn't they polish this? Oh, let's grab a little rag here and show you in real time. You see that ceramic haze? Well, if you just take a fiber cloth and just wipe that off. Bam, you have yourself super shiny, well protected ceramic coating from Ceramic Slam from Lithium. Yeah, look at that. A lot better for sure. Super clean. All right. Yep, another one. All nice and clean. Polishing this guy up. I mean, this blue is going to look super pretty in the sun for sure. And I uh, able to get into all those nit and neat, niche and crannies and all the little tough spots. All the dirt, you know, that dirt just splashed everywhere. I cleaned inside the calipers with, um, you know, the rubbing alcohol. That way you can get all that grit out of there too. And the rubbing alcohol will dry out so it doesn't contaminate any pads. So you want to be careful what you use around your hydraulic pad pistons and so forth. So we've been doing those for years. And cleaning the pads themselves, I use rubbing alcohol, then you burn them. Take a little, I have a little torch and kind of dry off all the, it burns off all the contaminants or any kind of oils that may have gotten on them during that process. But between cleaning them and also the rotors, cleaning those off uh, definitely will bring braking back to uh, actually it'd probably be better than it was originally because original pads have kind of a coating on them when they have to break in. Well, these will be already broken in and ready to go and cleaned. So they probably will perform better breaking than it was when it was new. In addition to cleaning the drivetrain and adjusting the hubs and so forth, the shifting and 
the the overall feel of the performance of the bike should be better too better than there so sometimes that first initial tune-up real tune-up not just your glance over free adjustment tune-up like the full tune-up on the bike after you're buying a new after a couple of years that actually will bring the bike probably better than it was when it was new hard to believe but that's kind of how it all works and things break in get the shifting a lot smoother get get the manufacturing grease off of there off the drive chain and put in a, a nicer light more performance lube for the chain and cassette and derailers and therefore you'll have probably a smoother better functioning bike than it did originally when it was new kind of crazy to think right it's kind of like cars they break in at a certain period of time or anything bikes are the same way so this performance of this bike is going to probably be out outperform the original tune-up or original uh, production build as it sits but anywho this one's gonna be beautiful let's check out what it looks like in the sun but beforehand smash those buttons if you like these videos find information more information below pertaining to tune-ups and so forth and what I do and it's nice in your neck of the woods. Go out for a ride. Go out for a ride. Just go out for a ride. Until next time, from the garage. <laughs>